Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs> Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central. And when we talk about Guns N' Roses guitar slash, we always talk about his iconic style, whether it's his long hair, his aviator shades, or his signature top hat. And of course, back in the day, he used to smoke a lot on stage and play guitar at the same time. Now, Slash used to be such a big smoker that back in the 1990s, when Guns N' Roses were about to hit the road on the Use Your Illusion tour, there was talk that some cigarette companies and beer companies were gonna be sponsoring the tour. So in an interview that Slash did with Rolling Stone in 1991, the interviewer asked him, what about the band? Your managers have been supposedly talking to cigarette and beer companies about sponsoring the tour. To which Slash said, I guess we're doing it, but I don't wanna sell out. I don't wanna be the next Janet Jackson, MC Hammer, or F and Eric Clapton, or whoever else. We're doing a tour, and if they wanna help pay for it, we'll use their name. We'll put banners up all over the gig. I don't give a shit. If there's a free cigarettes and free beer and they help pay for the tour, I don't care. But I'm not wearing a Budweiser t-shirt. I don't care if we do our own photos and it says Budweiser or Marlboro on the bottom of the page, but I don't want to do anything else where I'm holding up something with a big smile on my face. It's kind of funny considering Axel will sometimes wear a Marlboro shirt during the early gigs of the Use Your Illusion tour. And Slash used to wear a Black Death Vodka shirt because he had an endorsement from the vodka company. The next question that Slash got from the interviewer was about whether he was concerned about a backlash from the fans. He said, I don't think the fans will care. They all drink Budweiser and smoke Marlboros. I was worried about the parents and what they'd say about the cigarettes, but it's like some of the most influential personalities in baseball, football, basketball, and race car driving do ads. I mean, I advertise smoking constantly anyways. I can't help it. I don't see why cigarettes are any worse than beer. So today we're going to talk about why Slash quit smoking. And there's a couple different reasons I've seen Slash give for why he quits smoking cigarettes. So there was a article done in 2010 that uh, featured some interviews with Slash where he talked about giving up smoking. So according to the article, one of the reasons Slash gave up smoking was seeing his mother, Ola Hudson, lose her battle to lung cancer that helped him ditch the habit. He said, I've been off them for a year. The first time I quit smoking was because my wife and I, who he was referring to Pearl at the time, just had a baby and she claimed that the baby smelled like an ashtray. So I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. So I quit for a year and then I started again. Then this time my mom died of lung cancer and I got sick with pneumonia. And after I got sick, I had a cigarette in my hand and a lighter and I was about to smoke. And it just seemed really stubborn to me. Slash also went on to say in the interview with the Daily Telegraph that I, I just always smoked. It's not been too difficult to give a smoking apart from the fact that I found that I use Twitter all the time to keep my hands busy. He also said that I quit doing drugs because I'm a habitual kind of guy. If I quit doing drugs, then I drink. And then if I quit drinking, I do drugs forever. So I quit doing drugs this one time and I decided not to drink too. It's been four years and I really don't miss it. And then Slash even said uh, towards the end of him uh, with his smoking habit that he kind of was doing it just because he he'd he been doing it for such a long time, he didn't really enjoy it. So this is an interview that Slash gave where he talked about how Cher, going to a Cher show, uh, basically influenced his decision in quitting smoking. I heard that you're trying to quit smoking, how's that going? Well, it's been a, it's been a year, a year and a half. Really? Yeah. It's a, it's a bitch. I'm still on all kinds of nicotine supplements. And really? All that, yeah. I mean, smoking is such a major part of my existence, you know. Yeah. But uh, at one point, I, I was forced to quit smoking for two weeks because I, I had pneumonia, right? Actually, it was at the beginning of making this record, and I probably overworked, and all of a sudden it just hit me. And I, So for two weeks, I couldn't breathe, let alone smoke. Yikes. And after that was over, um, I was like, you know, I'm over the hump. I should at least try and see if I could. So I haven't smoked since then. Well, that's great. So pneumonia might have been the best thing that's ever yeah, happened to Yeah, I got you. pneumonia, I blame it on Cher, because I was, I was forced by, well, I wasn't forced, but I went with my wife against my better judgment to go see Cher in Vegas. Wow. And, that's a good husband, and I had to say. Yeah, and I've been, I got sick right after. <laughs> <laughs> so I quit smoking as a result of seeing Cher. So it's really Cher. Cher so out of tragedy yeah, comes something really yeah, good. So thanks, Cher. <laughs> the newest... <laughs> Cigarette, no more cigarettes. I quit smoking. I still, I still uh, do sort of tobacco or nicotine supplements, so mm. I haven't really quit. But I quit smoking like five years ago. Why? Well, um, you know, I was smoking like three, four packs a day, and you get to a point it's, with anything excess, you know, excessive, you get to a point where you're doing it, you don't even like it anymore. 
you know, and you actually spend most of your time complaining about doing it and keep doing it, which is mm. pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I, the, the catalyst was I, I was in Vegas seeing Cher, and I kept going outside to smoke during the whole show. Oh. And I next the next morning I, I was I had pneumonia, and I don't know what that was all about, but. Uh, so I was in bed for a couple of weeks and I couldn't breathe, let alone smoke. And at the end of the two weeks, I had the, the, the Marlboros on the, or actually I was smoking jetons, which are these French cigarettes. And I had the, the jetons on the nightstand and the lighter and I was all excited to get my first smoke in. And I thought, oh man, if I was thinking about quitting smoking, because I had been, I, I'm over the hump. You know, yeah. so I haven't, I haven't smoked since. Well, that's pretty neat, man. You're, you're, you're like, you have all this like perspective now. You're, you're, you know, what does... <laughs> 50 dude to make someone I'm not 50 yet. I know but you're approaching it right when you so I just turned 49 let's not push it yeah. <laughs> people go say right. yeah, what like, does 49 oh, in is, 3 in, months in uh, July when I turned 49 I was doing an interview with a guy and he goes so 50 well it's you know yeah. next year you're going to be 50 I, said, I just turned 49 2 days right. ago Anyway, I'm probably so. not going to see you in the next nine months. So I'm just, right, but I don't think that far ahead. So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. And you guys can also go follow us on GNRCentral.com for the latest and greatest Guns N' Roses news. Take care of it. You're watching Guns N' Roses.